At this time, please turn your attention to the field and the video boards as we recognize the real heroes of the NWSL Challenge Cup. The NWSL would like to thank its medical task force, ARUP, the University of Utah, Intermountain Healthcare, Unified Fire, High Class Maintenance, and United Healthcare for keeping all players and staff safe. Four weeks, 23 games, more than 2,000 COVID tests taken with no positive results because of you. Thank you for being the real heroes. And now to honor America, Heather Jackman will perform the U.S. National Anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. Houston and Chicago both looking to make a little history as neither club has ever won a championship in the NWSL. Now, let's love this game in this NWSL Challenge Cup one more time as Houston and Chicago play for the championship. Sweepstakes. And Jen, you mentioned number 28, Kayla Sharples, just getting her second start third appearance for the Chicago Red Stars in this tournament and for sure is a, a player to keep an eye on how she deals with the energy the excitement around this championship game that'll be the question for all of these players but her in particular a younger player finds herself in this position here comes Christy Mewis all the way into the area was she pulled down she was and a penalty kick is on the way for the Houston Dash just keep your feet moving. Allow for your players that are already central in the box to do their job. But on the other side, this is what we wanted to see out of Christy Mewis, and so did her coach, James Clarkson. It'll be Sophie Schmidt, the Canadian international for Houston. Schmidt got it. Houston up one. You can see the excitement on the Houston Dash players' faces. Getting off on the front foot right away. One of your midfielders taking advantage of that space in behind of a young player getting the start in this. Sophie Schmidt stepping up and just slotting this one home with ease and grace and confidence. Schmidt, the veteran, 32 years old, the oldest member of this Houston Dash. Julie Ertz, one of the most impactful players on any field that she is on. Here comes St. George. Former West Virginia Mountaineer cutting it back, putting it on goal. The Cavs goes there, heads it off the post. And Savannah McCaskill could not believe this ball is not in the back of the net. St. George creates the overload, just a little cut back to allow herself some time to serve a dangerous ball in. And it's Campbell that comes out and makes a save, but it's right, lands right to McCaskill. McCaskill, all she has to do, it's too easy right now for Chicago. They're making the field so narrow. The width from St. George is, isn't there when they're attacking. It's easy for Houston Dash to just get numbers behind the ball and defend. Here is Cola Preco. Right up the middle it goes. Hill in a foot race with Chapman for the offside flag arises. And this is better by Chicago getting players. Cola Preco deep from that midfield, looking to have little interchange play, looking for this final pass. Ultimate. Colaprico, quick turn, trying to pick out Hill. Turnover at St. George, aggressively hunting the ball. Johnson, with some time. Easy save, right eye Campbell. Prince with her toes, just about touching the end line, keeps it. Tries to get past St. George. We already saw one penalty kick awarded on this end of the field. Nothing doing that time. Now a very early sub, and 
the number on the board is Christy Mewis. We haven't seen many players take on St. George. And I think it was heartbreak that you saw really pouring down the face of Christy Mewis after all that she has put into this tournament and the toll it has taken to have to leave the field in a championship. Never an easy thing. Daly touches it back for Vizali. She and Ertz collide. Vizali now down. Maybe a bit unlucky there for Julie Ertz. Well, she's not afraid to get into tackles. We know that. We've seen that time and time again. And here, yeah, it does look actually like Vizali's trying to cut across. And, and now we see Rachel Daly over the ball now. Add Chapman wide open on the left. She finds her. Here is Chapman with that left foot groom. A little high for her. Aaron touch out of bounds by Julie Ertz. Daly across. Vizali too high. Hill. Looking for runners instead goes to McCaskill who will charge forward pops it up handball and now a free kick for Chicago Katie Naughton the former Chicago Red Star who came to Houston in that track in that trade for Kalia Watt a part of that play And we're starting to see Savannah McCaskill be able to pick up the ball in between the lines But she has to look for a chip here because there's no width if Katie Johnson can just pull her run wide, stay wider, allow for time for St. George to be able to create the overloads on that left-hand flank, they'll have more options in the attack. Houston did concede two goals off of free kicks in the first match of this tournament. Felt like they have done much better defending them since. McCaskill, cheeky little ball, up and out for a corner. Vanessa DiBernardo has taken more corner kicks than any player in NWSL history in the regular season. That's going to be one she'd rather have back. Comes St. George. Quick touch back to Cola Prico. Chicago hunting for that equalizer. Cola Prico into the area. Not a great header, but it does its job, at least initially. This is what you want from Chicago. Five or so minutes left in this half. They have to build momentum, see if they can sneak one back going into the halftime. Better build up play. You can still see how many players are on that back line for Chicago. For an assist in this championship match. Shea Groom not far behind Daly either. Two goals and an assist for Groom. She has not scored, though, for Houston since the second game of the tournament. McCaskill, meanwhile, has been very active for Chicago. Here is Hill. Across it goes. Paula Prico may have been blocked there by Prince. And this is the best buildup that we've seen from Chicago in this half. It's Johnson that finds McCaskill in between the scenes, exactly where the Red Stars want her to be able to run. She plays the final pass, opens up space in behind, out wide of the Houston Dash defense. Kalia Watt married J.J. Watt, Houston Texans defensive end earlier this year. It was Julie Ertz and Zach Ertz. Also another power athletic couple. Nair all the way out for this. Has to play it with her feet. Did not want to take any chances. But they figured out how to pick it up when it mattered. Two goals through their first five games. Three goals in their semifinal. But now they're going to be tasked with defending as Nichelle Prince gets around St. George. 
Sarah Gordon has to clear it away. It'll be a corner early here in the second half for Houston. Houston without their regular corner kick aficionado, Christy Mewis. CeCe Kaiser, her replacement, takes it the header up and over. Katie Naughton nearly getting it done against her former team. Kaiser, similar ball but closer to Nair who punches it. Chapman trying to keep it in play. Purple and St. George should be able to join in the attack. If it's not on, just recycle. Force the dash to defend, pull them out. Missed touch there, results in the turnover. Is who can else step up because it has to be less predictable. They need to get Michelle Prince on the ball more. Can Groom still make her runs? This is why they want Prince on the ball. She has been a handful for St. George. And Michelle Prince had to start off this tournament really with a heavy heart. Her father passed away in June. She had to go back home to Canada. That pregame show today, hope you guys got a chance to catch that on CBS Sports HQ. None other than two-time Olympic gold medalist Ali Wagner and someone by the name of Alex Morgan <laughs> and her adorable baby joining the show for some great perspective. McCaskill in the box for Watt, pulls it back, and it dribbles to Campbell. And Jen, those are two players that Roy Dame spoke to about being able to get a good look at in terms of what their team needs, what they can provide going into the 2021 season. That's Savannah McCaskill and Kalia Watt getting into the mix. We've seen a similar opportunity for Kalia, Kalia Watt in the quarterfinal. They said they've been using some of their bubble time to reminisce about their high school days and high school soccer. Oh, the glory days. <laughs> we love those, don't we? Yours are a little more glorified <laughs> than mine, but I still have fun. <laughs> in the box, a quick shot from Hill. But a little life I'm seeing for Chicago. And more interchange, little link play. This time it's Kalia Watt again getting more centrally, looking to lay the Daly looked up, had some space, gets a little closer out for a corner. Third corner of this half, Lori, for the dash. And this is that back pass that gets Nair almost in some trouble. Nichelle Prince does well to read it. It's a tough collision between the two. But just when we're saying Rachel Daly is quiet, she's starting to get active and wins this free kick, or corner kick, excuse me. It'll be CC Kaiser, former Ole Miss Rebel to Notton too high. Chicago, a footnote as you saw for Rachel Daly, scoring in her debut in the NWSL against the Red Stars. Hill. Foul call just outside the area. And Rachel Hill, it's the one getting on the front foot, running at this back line. And this is where Chicago has to continue to... In the semifinal. Hits a tart goal, and it is shaved up and out by Campbell. An excellent look by Savannah McCaskill. Just whips this one, gets some bin, and you see the dip. That forces Jane Campbell just to have to parry that one over the top. Right at the last minute is when the spin and dip happens. She does well with both hands. Easy in the end for her, but... Could have been da more dangerous. Sixth corner kick of the match for Chicago. Still at play. Nobody there to pounce on that ball in a blue jersey. Middle for McCaskill. Her touch not enough. Chapman intercepts, has some room to move. And that's the exact moment where Chicago can be better. It's their passes, their positional play. They're putting themselves in trouble. Prince sneaks out. Daly. She finds the back of the net, but not the ball. And this all starts from Houston just baiting Chicago. They pick off an early pass, and this is Michelle Prince getting on the half turn and running at the back line. It's a little combination play between her and Rachel Daly. 
It's that little combination play, and that's a good ball across. And you can see Rachel Daly wanting to do better with that. Just can't get her feet correct. There's a bit too much pace on it for her to be able to redirect that on frame. And Julie Ertz with the slide. Maybe make any other changes to try to generate something in that attack. Well, the biggest change that I would make is just trying to connect your passes in meaningful areas. That's a good example of how to do it. Houston, though, the one trying to add to their lead. Get on the end, but making sure she's stay, staying tight as a unit. It's going to be a foul against Chicago as Chapman goes down. And Julie Ertz, the guilty party. To my point about Haley Hansen, though, in this back line for Houston Dash. Take a look at this tough challenge by these two players. Chicago willing to be a little more direct if need be. Get that ball into their attacking third, support it with numbers. Ball in the box, Hill, collision in front of the goal, and the foul will go against Rachel Hill. And this is why Megan Oyster is so important to that back line for the Houston Dash. Missed last game in the semifinals due to injury, but just her positioning here, sees that Rachel Hill's coming, backs up to read this ball that's lofted in perfectly. And on the width. Alyssa Nair all the way up to take this free kick for her team. Ertz flicks it towards goal. Because they're forcing Chicago into their pressure. Here we go. Five minutes of stoppage time and Shea Groom could say good night. Houston at some insurance. And this is what it means to this Houston Dash team. They've come together throughout this entire tournament, and this is the price you pay if you're the Chicago Red Stars forcing numbers up. Alyssa Nair's pushing up, doing whatever you can to get a goal. And at least Shea Groom sitting on that back shoulder. Sarah Gordon does a good job of almost tracking back centrally to be able to save this, but it's all Shea Groom. Just a little tap around. Alyssa Nair, who's come off her line and just slots that one. James Clarkson used to say where Rachel Daly goes, the Houston Dash goes. And that for, certainly seems true today. Her leading her team to victory, practically nullifying any sort of attack from the Chicago Red Stars. A complete team performance. Celebration imminent. The players ready to run. Just waiting for that final whistle. Big smiles. They can take a deep breath now. before this tournament had never made the playoffs, had never played in the knockout game, now knocks off the Chicago Red Stars for the first championship in club history.
That is exactly right, Jen. The amount of effort this team put in collectively today, on the ball, off the ball, throughout this tournament. Rachel Daly even said it after the semifinal. Just getting to the championship, how important that was for their team, but also for the entire city of Houston. We can all use a little something to lift us up right now. I think that is the beauty of sport. It provides that. And you can just see how much this means to these Houston Dash players. Plenty more to come as we wrap up this championship match in the NWSL Challenge Cup. You're watching the NWSL Challenge Cup presented by P&G and Secret.